Hello everybody and welcome to the second video in this OpenCV Python tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be talking about image manipulation, how images are actually represented in the computer, and just giving you a bunch of information about how images actually work, because that's going to be very important for this series. It's kind of a prerequisite for the rest of the videos. Anyways, one of the kind of cool things I will show you how to do here is to copy a part of one image to another part of the image. So let's take a generic example. Let's say you had an image where there was like a hockey puck in it or a soccer ball or something, and you wanted to copy that multiple times. Well, I'd show you how you could do that. Uh, anyways, that is what we're going to do in this video. Before I dive into that, though, I will quickly mention that I am following along with OpenCV documentation for this tutorial. So a lot of people ask me, you know, how do you come up with this stuff? Like, are you just copying this from OpenCV? Um, I'm trying to be open and transparent with you guys. What I do before these videos is I go, I read the OpenCV documentation. I pull out stuff that I think is interesting and that I want to show. I skip over a lot of it and then I just go ahead and, you know, teach something interesting, essentially. So uh, I want to make that clear. I will link all of the OpenCV documentation that I use four videos in the description. So if you want the more detailed stuff where you want to see all the stuff that I skipped over, then click the link in the description. Last thing, there is a GitHub repository for this tutorial series. Uh, this will be linked in all of the descriptions for all of these videos, and you can see all of the code that we write in each video. Right now, I'm obviously only up to tutorial one. So I have the tutorial one code upload on GitHub. And as the code gets more complicated, this will be more useful. So just check the descriptions. Anyways, uh, let's dive in here. So the first thing that I want to show you is how an image is actually represented, because obviously we loaded in this image, but what does the image actually look like? What is representing this image and how do we display this image? Well, we know how to display it, but how does the computer kind of interpret it? So let me just print out this image here and let's just have a look at what it is. So when I print it out, we actually get what's known as a NumPy array here. And you can see we have a bunch of pixel values, which are all just white uh, because this is the border of the image that's showing us. Anyways, the reason I'm showing you this is because we need to understand how an image is actually represented. Now, uh, in our OpenCV, we actually use NumPy. So OpenCV and NumPy are very closely correlated. And when you load an image, what it actually does is it extracts the pixels from this image and loads them into a NumPy array. So if I were to type uh, or I were to print, sorry, the type of image, you would see that we get a NumPy.nd array. You don't have to understand NumPy. You don't have to know NumPy at all to follow along with this. But if you do know NumPy, then this is probably useful information. So NumPy is kind of a high performance array library for Python. It just allows you to do more optimized operations with arrays. I believe it's uh, backend or it's, you know, lower level code is written in C or C++. Uh, and well, it just makes this so we can do faster and better operations on arrays in Python. Anyways, anything that you would normally know about a regular list in Python will apply to a NumPy array, except there's just a ton of other stuff that you can do. So for example, I can print out the shape of a NumPy array. Now the shape of this array tells me the number of rows, the number of columns, and then the number of channels in my image, uh, specifically when we're talking about images. So if I print this out, we get 995 by 1000 by 3. That tells me that I have 995 rows in my image. When I say rows, that's the height of the image. This tells me I have a thousand columns. So that is the width of the image. Uh, and then it tells me that I have three channels. So again, the order is height, width, and then channels. Now, when I say channel, a channel is really just the color space of our image. So how many pixels or how many values, sorry, are representing each pixel. Now, it turns out that uh, in our NumPy arrays or in our OpenCV library, whatever, we have three values that represent each of our pixels. Now, those values are red, green, and blue. And specifically in OpenCV, it's actually going to be blue, then green, then red. Now, let me show you what I mean by this. So firstly, you have to understand that when we're representing this image, we have a three-dimensional array. We have an interior array. So let me, let me draw out a kind of example here that looks something like this. We have our first array. Then inside of this array, we have a bunch of other arrays. These arrays represent the rows of our images. Then inside of these arrays, we have a bunch of pixel values, and these are the columns in each row. So I might have a pixel that is black, so that would be 0, 0, 0. I might have a pixel that's white, so 255, 255. But this is kind of how it's laid out. So if I just had a 2 by 2 image, so 2 pixels by 2 pixels, then let's just copy this. It will be represented in our program. Uh, something like this. We would just have two pixels by two pixels. We'd have two black pixels and then two white pixels. So we would know that this pixel here was at position zero, zero, or it was the top left pixel because that's where it is in the array. 
So hopefully that's clear, but you have three values that represent each pixel and regularly it's going to be red, green, blue in OpenCV, It's actually going to be blue, green, red. Now, what I mean by that is if we have three values, zero, zero, zero here, we read them like this blue, green, then red. So this is the amount of blue in our pixel, the amount of green in our pixel and the amount of red in our pixel. Now, the values here that are uh, valid is between zero and 255. So zero represents none. 255 represents all. So if I were to have, say, 255, 0, 0, that means I have a blue pixel. I have no green, no red, and all blue. If I were to have like 128 here, that would mean I would have like a slightly lighter blue than if I just had 255. So hopefully that's clear, but that is how you represent a pixel with blue, green, and red values. You have three of them, all, all of which, which are in the range of zero to 255. So we will continue in one second, but I need to quickly thank the sponsor of this video and this series, which is Algo Expert. Algo Expert is the best platform to use when preparing for your software engineering coding interviews. They have a data structures crash course, mock interviews, and over 125 high quality coding interview questions that all have a detailed conceptual overview and code walkthrough. I'm actually an instructor at Algo Expert, and you can check out some of the questions that I've created by going to the link in the description and using the code tech with him for a discount on the platform. Now to bring this back to what I just explained, these pixels are all set up in columns and those columns are all in a row. You have multiple rows, all which have all of the column values in them. And then inside of the column, uh, you have your pixels. So hopefully that's clear. That's how this works. That's the basic representation. And the reason that's important is because when we manipulate images, all we're really doing is modifying this array. For example, even when we rotated this image, all that actually happened in kind of the lower level when I wrote that uh, CV2 to uh, rotate is it took this array that we had and it just rotated the values in that array such that we have the rotated image. So you don't really need to use the CV2 library to do all of this. It is going to be better to do that, but you actually can manually modify images by just modifying the array data structure that represents them. So let's show some more concrete examples. Let us actually change the I'm trying to think of a good example here. Let us look at the first row of our image. So if I wanted to look at the first row of my image, I would print out IMG at index zero. So this will give me the first row. So if I do that, you can see we have our first row, which is filled with a bunch of white pixels. Now let's just go and look at row 257. When we do that, uh, 257 is still giving us white pixels. Uh, oh, it makes sense because those the border it's showing us. OK, so I'm just going to look at the first row. And then what I want to do in the first row is I want to look at the let's see here, uh, the middle pixels. So I'm going to look at pixels between 45 and 400. So when I do this, notice that we now find some pixels that have different colors associated with them. Uh, just to be clear here, the reason I keep getting white is because the border of my image is white. So when it, it just shows me the first and last element in the array. So that's why that's happening. Anyways, this is how we would print out the first row. And then this is how we would look at the pixels between 45 and 400 in the first row. So that column value. Now, if I wanted to look at one pixel in particularly, I could remove this slice so we could look at 257, 400. And now if I print this out, it's going to give me the value of one of these pixels. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change a bunch of the pixels in my image. And I'll show you what that actually looks like when we uh, when we put the image up. All right, so my screen recording software just bugged out for a second. I don't know why that was happening. Anyways, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to loop through the first 100 rows in our image. So recall what we're doing is we're going to loop through. I, I just picked 100 as an arbitrary number. You can loop through whatever you want. I just want to show you how we can actually change pixels and what that looks like. So I'm going to say 4i in range and then 100. We're going to look through the first 100 rows. We're then going to say 4j in range. And then here I'm actually going to say IMG dot shape at index one. Now recall that when we do the shape, this is going to give us the rows, columns and channels. So number of values that represent a pixel. That's what channels is. Uh, so I want to look at the columns. So for each 100 rows, I want to loop through the entire width of the image. So the entire column I want to actually modify. So we're going to loop through IMG dot shape one, which is well, the width of the image. So anyways, then once I have this, I'm going to say IMG at index i at index j is equal to and then whatever color I want to make all of these pixels. So we could make these uh, pixels random colors. In fact, let's do that because I think that's more fun than just making them black. I'm going to import random uh, and then inside of here, let's say random dot and then rand int and we'll just go up to 255 and then we will do this three times. 
Okay, and I think that should be good. Oops, I didn't mean to copy the start of the list here. Let's remove that, remove that. And okay, so let me zoom out so you guys can see this. What I've done is said IMG I J uh, is equal to and then random dot rand int random dot rand int random dot rand int. So we'll have three random values. Now I want to show the image. So what I'm going to say is CV2 dot I am show. We will say image. We will show IMG and then we'll say CV2 dot wait key zero. So wait an infinite amount of time. Then CV2 dot destroy all windows. And there we go. So let's run this. And we got an issue. I'll be right back after I look at that. So I made a small mistake here. I said rand int instead of rand range, although we can still make this work. I just have to put a zero first uh, for my rand int. When you take a rand integer, you need to have a uh, lower bound and an upper bound. So I just had a small mistake. But anyways, we need zero to 255, zero to 255, zero to 255. I think that should work. And now notice that the entire top of my image is a bunch of random colors because we just randomly set the pixels to whatever we wanted them to be or to whatever this randomly selected. So that is how you modify the image. You can just go ahead and change the pixel values. And then when you display the new image, it will have those new pixel values. So doing things like looping through, you know, the border of an image and changing it is actually really easy, like I just showed you. So that's one way to manipulate images. Uh, and there's a few other ways that we can do it as well. So what I'm going to show you now is how we can actually copy one part of an image and paste it to another part. So I'm going to get rid of this for loop because we don't need that anymore. And uh, let's just look at this image and we can see that I kind of have this like logo here, right? So I don't know the exact dimensions or the exact coordinates of this logo, but what I'm going to try to do is, is take this logo here, take this like little HTML tag. I don't know why I'm calling it a logo, sorry, uh, and copy it and just throw it somewhere else on the image. Again, this is not to, to look good. It's just for an example. Uh, so let's try to do that. So I'm just trying to figure out where this would probably be. Um, okay, that's probably about 500, 600, something like that. Anyways, let's try this. So if I want to copy part of the image, what I can do is just copy part of the array. So I'll find the part in the array that I want, and I'll show you how we do that with the slice. And then we'll just take that and we'll just paste that into another part of the array. This seems strange, but it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to say logo or let's just call this tag is equal to and then IMG. And I'm going to use a NumPy array slice. Now I will describe how this works, but it's just like a regular slice in Python, except you can do it uh, twice inside of here. So I'm going to say I want to copy from row 500 to row 700. And I want to copy in those rows. So in row 500 to 700, I want to copy which columns? Well, I want to copy, let's say, columns 600 to 900. So what this is going to do is it's going to copy a square of my array. So it will copy from 500 to 700. So all of the rows from 500 to 700, not including 700, then it will copy all of the columns from 600 to 900 that are in this row. So hopefully that's clear, but that's how that works. We're going to copy that into this tag um, uh, variable here. Then what I'm going to do after that is I'm going to paste this into part of the array. So I'm going to say IMG. And then we'll just pick a random position here that we want to paste it at. Uh, we will say that we want to paste it. Let's go from row 100 to 300. Now notice that when I paste this, it needs to be the same shape as what I've copied. So I need to pick a location in my image that is the same dimensions as the, uh, the image that I copied. So we'll say 100, 300, then we'll put it at, you know what, 100, actually not 100. Let's go like, nine, no, maybe not 900, um, 700 to, and then a thousand. No, we don't have a thousand. Sorry. I'm just trying to pick something that's going to work here. Let's go 650 to 950. So I'm now going to take whatever part of the image is in this section and I'm going to paste it in this section. So I'm going to say this is equal to, and then tag, and then I will show the image. Now I understand this might be slightly confusing, but I'm just, again, taking a slice of my image array and then I'm going to replace this entire slice with this slice that we just took previously. And notice these are going to be the same dimensions, right? It's the same number of blocks in between or same number of uh, elements in between. So anyways, let's run this. And now notice that I've completely messed up what I was trying to copy, but I've taken whatever this was here, the, this mouse, I guess, and I've pasted it in the top right hand corner of the image. So that is how you can take something from the image, copy it and then paste it somewhere else. 
Now, obviously, you need to know where the thing is. I was clearly quite off. I got the hand here, uh, but that's kind of the general idea. So I think that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Again, not super interesting or useful. We're going to get into all that stuff later on, but it's very important to understand this. And I would recommend that you mess around with these NumPy arrays, modify them, see if you can write some cool scripts that go and even maybe generate an image and then display that image, see what it looks like and just mess around with it. So anyways, that has been this video. I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in another OpenCV tutorial.